In the last video, we saw a geometric viewpoint on simultaneous equations in two variables, uh, reinterpreting them as lines in the plane, and the set of solutions is the set where the lines have a common intersection. So we're going to generalize that now to three and higher dimensions, or three or more variables. So let's start with an example. Um, let's say we have x minus y plus z equals 1 as one of our equations, three variables x, y, z, and x minus z equals 0 for the other. So instead of assigning a line to each of these, we assign a plane. So each of these gives a plane in R3, three-dimensional space with coordinates x, y, z. Um, I could sketch these planes. Uh, rather than doing that, I'm going to cheat and get the computer to do it. So um, here we go. So the plane in blue is x equals z, or x minus z equals 0. So z goes up, x goes uh, this way, and y goes this way. So you can see this, in, in the xz plane, this plane over here, um, this is just the line x equals z, which goes like that. And as you move in the y direction, nothing changes. It just translates along. It's invariant in the y direction. This red plane here is, um, is the other one, which is, uh, let's check, x minus y plus z equals 1. Second one's blue, first one's ready orange. And they intersect along this black line that I've drawn here. So this black line is now the set of solutions of the system of equations, right? So if you have a point that satisfies the first equation, it lies on the red plane. If you have a point that satisfies the second equation, it lies on the blue plane. If you have a point that satisfies both, it has to lie on both planes, so it lies on the line of intersection. Let's solve these equations. The second equation tells us z is x. So substitute that into the first, and we get 2x uh, minus y equals 1. In other words, y is 2x minus 1. So we have z and y in terms of x. x is a free variable. Um, and that makes sense, right? Because a line has a parameter. As you move along the line, there's some number that tells you how far along you are. That number is going to be x. So the line of intersection between our planes is in sort of parametric form x 2x minus 1 x. So as x varies, this triple of points traces out the black line in this diagram. More generally, any equation like a1x plus a2y plus a3z equals b will define for us a plane. R3. And just as for lines, we can think of these three numbers a1, a2, a3 as giving us the normal vector to the plane. So the vector a1, a2, a3 is at right angles to the plane. And b is telling us something about where it intercepts each of the different uh, axes. So, for example, where does it intercept the z-axis? Well, the z-axis is where x and y are both 0. So, um, if x and y are both 0, then we get a3z equals b. So, z equals b over a3 is the z-intercept. And similarly for the other two axes. Let's consider the same two equations 
and then add a third. So um, I go back up to the top. I'm going to add in the equation uh, x minus y equals zero. And this is going to be in green. So we now have three hyperplanes and the set of solutions will be the set where all three intersect. So let's see um, what happens if I add this equation in. Well, I already know that z equals x and y is 2x minus 1. This third equation is telling me y equals x as well. Uh, so y equals x and that's also equal to 2x minus 1. That tells us uh, x equals 1. And so that overall we get x equals y equals z equals 1. So if we have these three planes, rather than getting a line of intersection, there's a single point where all three intersect. Let's look at a picture. So um, again, the three equations are red, blue, and green. And I've drawn the three lines in black where each pair of planes intersect. So if you take two of the equations at, at once, you get one of these three lines. So if you take the, the red and the blue equations, you get this line. If you take the green and the blue equations, you'll get this line. And if you take the other two, you'll get this line. And you can see those three lines all intersect at this one point as well. So if you take the three planes, they're all going to intersect at this point, right in the middle, this sort of blob. And that's at 1, 1, 1. Maybe if I just wiggle it around a bit, you can get a better sense for how everything is situated in space. Or maybe you'll just get seasick. Okay, this is what happens with three variables. What if we add more variables? Four variables, for example. So with four variables, each equation, each linear equation, a1 w plus a2x plus a3y plus a4z equals b defines something in four-dimensional space. So what what we're not going to have a standard name for this in our ordinary vocabulary because we don't come across four-dimensional things in everyday life. But mathematicians have a name for this, so this defines what's called a hyperplane. in four-dimensional space. That's the analogue of a plane in 3D. It's like hyper makes it, you know, higher dimensional. So the word hyperplane means it's cut out by exactly one of these equations. So in this is in n variables. So a1, x1 plus a n x n equals b defines a hyperplane in Rn. If I start adding more equations, um, I no longer get a hyperplane. A hyperplane is what you have when you have exactly one equation. So um, given M equations. The system of solutions, I'll write it as a matrix equation, A, V equals B. Um, this is in the matrix form. The set of solutions is, it's called a subspace. Rn, and it's given by the intersection of the hyperplanes for each equation. So it's given by intersecting the 
M hyperplanes. come from the equations. So subspace is a word that means it sort of generalizes point, line, plane, all the way up to hyperplane. So anything in between you call a subspace. Any of these you call a subspace. So let's do an example. Consider the equations w plus x plus y plus z equals 0 and x minus y equals 1. It's four variables, so we're working inside four dimensional space. Um, each equation gives us a hyperplane, and the two hyperplanes intersect along a two dimensional plane. So these give us two hyperplanes intersecting along a two-dimensional subspace. I'm going to justify this in a second. That's a C. Okay, let me get a new page. So let's solve the equations and see algebraically what do we get. Well, the second equation we're going to use to express x in terms of y. When we substitute that into the first equation, we get w plus 1 plus 2y plus z equals 0. So w is minus 1 minus 2y minus z. So overall, we have two dependent variables, x and w, and two free variables, y and z. And the fact we have two free variables is what tells us that we have a two-dimensional subspace of solutions. All right, each free variable is a coordinate on the space of solutions. So more generally, this is telling us, um, and you could treat this as a definition of dimension if you like. Um, it's not how you'll see definition uh, dimension defined in future courses, but it's equivalent to that. So more generally, I mean, not write an implication sign because there's actually no implication here. So more generally. Um, if um, AV equals B has a solution with K free variables then uh, the sp subspace of solutions k-dimensional. Maybe to make this sentence less confusing, rather than saying a solution with k free variables, uh, let me just say has k free variables in its general solution. When you solve it, you get k-free variables. That means the subspace of solutions is k-dimensional. 
Okay, because this notion of a subspace is not something you have maybe come across before, um, I'm going to spend another video talking about subspaces and developing some theory um, for how to work with subspaces. Um, and then we'll move on and talk about uh, some other stuff about matrices.